Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of PKM Weekly. So first week of May, and let's see what's been happening over the past week. First up, Obsidian. So this is a video from Anton. He goes through a very deep dive of the make.md plugin, and he calls it the best offline notional alternative through Obsidian. And in this video, I mean, it's not last week, uh, I think it's from the week before, but I thought it was such a good video that I'd post it this week. And then it just basically does a deep dive of the make.md plugin, and that allows you to leverage different views, different dashboards, databases, properties, formulas, sort, filter, everything that you could possibly want that you can find in Notion, but have the power of it within Obsidian so that your notes are local first and you keep all of the advantages of Obsidian. And in the video, uh, he goes through the very detail, so installing it, some of the settings he plays around with, just to make it sure that the sync and various different things work. Uh, navigation with various different spaces, the, the views themselves, so table, board, calendar, and all of the views that you can have. Properties that you can play around with, so you can have Notion-like databases. Uh, filtering, sorting, grouping, etc, etc. So definitely do check this video out, because it's a great introduction to the make.md plugin, which, to be honest, I didn't realise was such a powerful plugin. Uh, but thanks to this video, and thanks to Anton for doing this. So definitely do check that out if you haven't already done so, because it might just change your life. Although it does change, I believe, the markdown files themselves, uh, but that's the price you have to pay if you want some other flexibility. Next up, Engineer's Guide to Building a Second Brain Obsidian. So OP was basically forgetting everything. Um, he had a disorganized digital chaos uh, and basically he needed to change it. So in this article he goes through and how he's come up with a second brain philosophy within Obsidian. So to keep himself organized and various different things. And it's not just this is another um, article or this top 10. It basically goes through the very detail. I mean, some of the stuff at the beginning is just well known of what is Obsidian, blah, 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 how he stumbled upon it. And then he goes into it of how he sets his Obsidian vaults up um, to basically do what he needs to do from an engineering point of view. So definitely worthwhile checking out that one as well. And thank you very much for creating. And next up with Obsidian is AI Tools Explained. So this is a video from Paul Dixon and just goes through all of the tools, the AI explained within Obsidian so that you can leverage the power of AI within Obsidian and your notes. So again, definitely worthwhile checking out if you're interested in AI and want that power within your Obsidian vaults and notes. So thank you very much, Paul, for doing that. Next up, Logseek. So I've been a quite a few updates uh, for the past week, um, especially as the team is getting more and more um, communicative shall we say. So uh, there was a post in Discord and GitHub about the various different status of what's been happening. So you can check out here. So this has been updated um, earlier or late last week. And it just goes through, this is the current state of affairs within Obsidian, within LogSeq database, and what's what they've been up to and what still needs to be done. So definitely worth checking that one out. And this is just a recap of the main enhancements that have been changed over the past months or so. So multiple tabs and multi-window support, significant performance improvements, export DB as standard markdown, talked about that last week, selected notes as EDN, uh, better property navigation, talked about that one last week as well, and full query or enhanced query UX just makes things easier. So that was that one from the team themselves, but if you want to be even kept more up to date, definitely do check out the posts from Danzer, who posts a regular weekly, um, usually, update to the LogSeq um, forum or discuss, and he basically just goes through the various different updates that have been happening. And now we've got table and row navigation, which we'll get to in a second, some new features that they've been added in, some enhancements and some bug fixes. So definitely do keep an eye out on this page so I say it is updated very regularly on a weekly basis by Danzu about what's been happening within LogSeq. So thank you very much again, Danzu, for doing that. Um, AI within LogSeq this time. So chat with your notes and get the full context. So OP built LogSeq Composer. It's just a plugin that basically allows you to connect, connect, uh, connect LogSeq with any LLM um, within the context of your notes, and it's prepared a brief video for us. So we can see, brings up the chat box or the LogSeq Composer, chats with it, 
on the, um, in, the, in the input box. Um, asks it what his favourite foods are. LLM responds. He then navigates to a page called My Favourite Foods and it's basically taken the context from that note and chatted or outputted it within the chat box. So definitely worthwhile having a look at this one if you want AI within your LogSeq notes. And next up was a bit of an update that we touched upon earlier. Uh, easier navigation on table and rows. So what we can do now is we can basically use the keyboard to navigate within a table. So go across the cells, uh, edit the cells, tweak the cells, whatever we might need to do with them just using the keyboard as opposed to having to grab the mouse and interrupting the workflow. So definitely a good quality of life improvement. So thank you, Tiensen and the team. Tana, they've had a few recent updates. So desktop app version 1.0.28, that's now live. So main window view is hidden. Um, app now handles the main window view outside screen bounds. Uh, keyboard binding windows fixed. Um, yeah, quite a lot of fixes within the desktop app just to make it a little bit more uh, some quality of life improvements. The mobile app has also improved with the biggest update being the edit mode. It's now no longer in early access and available by default. So now you can basically use the mobile to edit your notes as opposed to just being in read only. Some reference searches and then attachments. You can directly upload attachments from a node while editing it without leaving the context. What they've also done is they've integrated more um, AI models within TANA. So basically what you can find here is, because they believe AI is gonna be at the forefront of everything, they've now given us the opportunity to interact with more models themselves. So Gemini 2.5 Flash, GPT-3, GPT-4, 04, 4.1s, et cetera, et cetera. So basically you can interact with all of these new models uh, within your notes. And definitely do check this guide out of how you can implement them and how it works. And in addition to the above, they've been playing around with a little bit of um, auto-language detection, so with the voice, so previously you had to choose a language. Um, now Tana will detect automatically, so you can just go straight in and just chat. Uh, dynamic language, language switching, so if you switch between languages mid-conversation, you don't need to pause or anything, Tana should pick that up directly. And faster startup, which is great, because it just allows you to just start chatting rather than having to pause and wait. And then Andrew, he's been looking at some seven Tana ninja tricks uh, following his discussions with an all-star Tana ambassador team. So Andre, Ev, Face and RJ, uh, they showcased some very different um, advanced productivity systems. And he's gone through and he's picked out his top seven. So definitely do check this out. And I, I love the way he's done it. So this is the, uh, the, the hint, the tip, and a bit of a description and also a little bit of a GIF that should play, um, there we go, so you can then see how it works and implement it yourself. So thank you very much Andrew for that and definitely do check out Tana Stack and follow that if you're not already because um, lots of quality things from Andrew on Tana. Capacities, um, so they've got a bit of a questionnaire going out of enhancements that you would like um, within, within capacities and they've asked the community for this. So basically, they want to know your thoughts on how do you typically formulate your, question, your, your search queries, value proposition, what's important to you, various different things of how they can make capacities better for the actual users. So if you haven't already done so, do check out the link within the Discord. There's a thread going there and put your thoughts and opinions to it because I'm sure the team would love to hear and who knows how you might shape the future of capacities. And then there was another one, which is a bit on the flip side. So best PKM app for search, but disappointed by capacities. So six months ago, they switched capacities from OneNote and basically have now found that the tagging and search capabilities within capacities were terrible. So they thought it'd be a huge improvement, but it's actually a disappointment. And you can read this one up here of, of what he thinks about it and why and various different responses that he's got. Um, so it's definitely worthwhile checking out if you are in the same boat and if you are just put your comments there and get in touch with the team on Discord because I'm sure that they would do anything just to keep the users happy uh, wherever they can do that. So AppFloy version 0.9.1 that's been released so lots of updates within the, des within the desktop app. 
Um, so prompt libraries changed, revamped desktop in-app notification center, fixed data loss when using anonymous local. Not sure really what that means, but there we go. Uh, fix a scaling issue in Windows and fix various different other things. And on the mobile app, supported workspace search, improved UX, um, added support for inviting members via links and whatnot. So definitely worthwhile updating your app flowy if you haven't already done so. Any type, there was a bit of a video from the team about how to create a type, add properties and use templates to get a fillable form on every page. So it's about a 15 minute video or so, and it just goes through the detail of how you can create a type, add various different properties to the grid view, um, adding a relation, linking in the graph, properties, etc. So it just goes through basically how you can use any type um, and leverage the power behind it to get the well, get the best out of the app. So definitely worthwhile checking that one out. Or cannot, they've got version 1.8.0 released, so that includes lots of bug fixes, and most importantly, or the biggest enhancement is PDF block, so now you can do a complete PDF reader with highlights. So you can see here, it's got the PDF uh, loaded in, and then you can extract and annotate it and have your notes on the right-hand side within, the, within a page um, that you have. So definitely a big update from Seth Yuan on Orcanaut, so well done on that one. Constella, it's been mentioned quite a few times from a medium reader of mine. Um, so finally, I'm posting about it. Thank you very much for keeping chasing me about it. Um, so basically, the team did a recent update on the app um, and the website itself, and it's definitely worth checking out because it's a big improvement to how it looked previously. So now you can actually see what, what it is about, how it works. So uh, basically, instead of capture, recall, and think on a whole new different level, uh, you've got the mobile app, and you can get Constella on the desktop app see how it kind of looks from these uh, images here and then it just goes through the very detailed of how it works how what the features are and also what I love is there's quite a few use cases that you can go through and see which one suits you and how Constella can work for you pricing very reasonable 599 for all the basics and 1499 dollars per month for everything in starter full UI 500 minutes of uh, Constella calling uh, personal assistant, auto-tagging, and syncing with Readwise, Zapier, and other integrations. So very reasonably priced compared to the other uh, PKM apps out there. And if you haven't already done so, uh, check it out. Uh, not that one. You can download the app. And I've clicked the wrong button. Uh, you can download the app, or you can test it out online as well, just going to the website and clicking Get Constella. So that's that one on that one. So definitely worthwhile checking out. And also what they've done, which I thought was a very clever one, similar to how OneNote does things, is that if you have handwritten notes, um, scan to Constella, what that will do is it will take a scan of the, your handwritten page and then scan it in, and there you have your notes within your graph. So definitely a big improvement, and I'm glad to see that they're taking handwritten notes seriously. Uh, Remnote, uh, what they've done is if you have a PDF, let's say, which has been scanned in um, or photographed, whatever it might be, but it doesn't have a text layer, now Remnote will automatically OCR it, so it will add a text layer on top of it, so that then you can now do highlights, annotate it, and use the various different AI features within Remnote to get the most out of it. So definitely a big improvement, and just makes things easier if you don't have the proper PDF in Adium with the text fields or with the text layer on top of it. And last but not least is Thymer, so another tease by the devs. So now we've got split view um, within within the app. So you can see here is playing around with the Kanban board, opens up the editor in a separate pane, so we can see that it's got the, the projects in the pane. And then he opens up a PDF within it, so now we've got the three, and basically plays around with that so that we can have multi-pane and go through it and check out our notes, which is ideal for planning and researching. But unfortunately, it's still not released, and from the last post from one of the devs is we will have to wait a little while longer because private beta is planned for the next few weeks. Hopefully, it's going to be released at some point because it does look quite interesting. Um, and that's it for this week, so thank you very much as usual for being here, and I shall see you next week. Thanks, bye.